The following opinions are solely those of Boatest.com and its test captain. Hi, Captain Steve for Boatest.com, and today I'm going to do a sea trial on a luxury yacht that's made for coastal cruising for an owner-operator with a lot of friends or a big family. It's the Endurance 658 from Hampton Yachts. As we get underway, I'm immediately impressed with how responsive she is to the bow and stern thrusters. They put out plenty of torque and had a side slipping from the dock nicely. We also started to get a quick feel for how responsive she is to the helm. This starts to bode well for a cruiser targeting the owner-operator. The Hampton Yachts Endurance 658 has a length overall of 68 feet, a beam of 18 feet, and a draft of 5 feet 2 inches. With an empty weight of 102,500 pounds, 57% fuel, and 6 people on board, we had an estimated test weight of 112,860 pounds. With a pair of Cat 12.9 1,000 horsepower engines turning 40 by 35.5 five-bladed props, we reached our top speed of 20.3 knots at 23.15 RPM. There really isn't a best cruise per se, but she's more of a boat that you adjust your speed based on how far you want to go. Cruise to a distant location at just over 10 knots, and that location can be over 900 nautical miles past the horizon. Drop the speed down to 8.6 knots at 1,000 RPM, and the range opens up to 1,349 nautical miles. Once there, explore at 16 knots, and she'll keep going for more than 368 miles. In short, it's as much about the journey as the destination with this yacht. A couple of things I like at the lower helm, as soon as I put my hand on the steering wheel, I like that immediately it's got a nice wide rim to it. Electric over hydraulic steering and it's very responsive, so I'm not sure of the rudder size on this boat, but I can tell that they're huge because as soon as I move the wheel, we get an immediate response to it. Notice when we put the wheel hard over that she stays flat during the turn, but comes around quite nicely. Once we get established into the turn, then there's about a five degree list to the outboard side of the turn. Now another indication that she's got big rudders, if I take power off completely, put her into neutral, then bring the helm hard over. I still have great responsiveness, just as if we had power on still. As we made our way back to the confines of the marina, it was time to put those big rudders to the test, and sure enough, we had impressive control authority. I was able to spin us right around and lay her up port side too with little effort and no practice approaches were needed to get the feel for it first. This really is an operator friendly boat. So now that we're tied up, let's look over some of her operational features. The flying bridge helm starts with chart storage and storage underneath to both port and starboard. The captain is centrally located at the helm, compass right in line with the steering wheel. Just below, twin 16 inch displays a Garmin Autopilot and secondary nav display. Moving down, we've got the twin cat displays, fusion stereo with accessory plug, remote control for the spotlight, windlass control, trim tabs, ignitions, the joystick for the bow and stern thruster, and the main engine controls. I really like the steering wheel with its thick rim, and notice the wood spokes on top of stainless steel. Three helm seats from Pompanet Platinum Series. They swivel, slide, adjust up and down. All three have flip down armrests and flip down footrests. There's a ladder so that we can get to the top of the overhead to service the antennas. When we're not using that ladder, it stores conveniently out of the way in this spot right here. And that's a great use of space. And we're seeing examples of that all throughout this yacht. At the lower helm, the glass dash theme continues with three 16-inch displays. To the left-hand side, there's a secondary navigation display just above the tank indicator for the fuel and water tanks. Stereo is just below that. Beautiful wood panel houses. The cat displays with the autopilot in the center. Remote control for the spotlight is over to the left-hand side. Windshield wipers, track stabilizers, the engine controls, the bow and stern thrusters, ignitions, windlass controls, and trim tab controls. The horn switch is over on the left hand side and I'd like to see that labeled. A couple of features that I really like, the helm is on an elevated platform so that we have great visibility all around with just the exception of the refrigerated area for the galley. The windows all have electric blinds so when we're not operating we can cover them up and protect all of our electronics. Wraparound windows at the corners lead us to the forward windshields that measure 36 inches by 32, each with pantograph wipers. And notice how the windshield overhang creates shade and less rain on the windows. And I also like the windshield wipers are all synchronized with one another. The seats are from Pompanet, they're Platinum Series. They adjust electrically, high, low, and fore and aft. 
flip down armrests, and flip down footrests. From an owner operator's perspective, I certainly appreciate that there are doors to both side decks. To the port side, it opens forward so that we have access to the aft side of the deck. The starboard side opens aft, so now we have access to the forward Portuguese bridge. Now, not only am I impressed with the heavy duty hardware, but also the ease of operation. This door opens with one hand. It's also nice that we have access from the pilot house helm to the flying bridge helm. At the companionway leading down below, we have the ship's main electrical panel and everything lights once we open up the door. Side decks to both port and starboard lead us to the bow. Let's take a look. Now, we measured 18 inches of deck space. The rail comes up 31 inches, but when we come to the midship area and step up, the rail height increases to 41 inches. Two operational features to the side decks. On both sides, we have fuel fills, and the venting is on the inside, not on the outside of the side deck. Plus, we've got a space for our absorbent pads. Just opposite, on the inside of the side decks, again, venting to the engine room so they're not drawing in salt air from the outside. Now, this is neat. Midship on the starboard side, we have shore power connections, and we can use this instead of the connections at the stern, depending on how we're docking the boat. The foredeck is up an eight inch step. And then when we get to the working end of the bow, we've got salt water and fresh water wash down, full control switches and dual windlasses to both sides, giving us two anchors mounted to a pulpit ready at a moment's notice. We also have locking mechanisms to take the load off of the working gear when the anchors are deployed. Storage is to both sides and removable bins allow access to the chain locker underneath. Beefy stainless steel rail goes all the way around. Rail height of 46 inches and notice the cleats located inside the center of the hawse holes. To both port and starboard at the aft deck, we have control stations that include controls for the engines and the bow and stern thrusters. And the best part, both of these sets are standard. At the stern, the shore power connections are at the bottom stair to both port and starboard. And notice how they're not only on a cord reel, there's also a channel for the cord to run through so that you don't trip over it as you're walking along the stern. And here's a nice touch. Notice this little protrusion to help you lift the cover to the channel. Notice the elongated rails to make them a little easier to grab onto. Just below, heavy-duty cleats are recessed into the streamlined bulwarks. And down below in the swim platform, flip up eight-inch cleats. Hawse holes in the bulwarks have cleats integrated into them so we can actually tie the boat up from the dock. To the sides of the swim platform, we have a salt water and fresh water washdown to the opposite side is storage. In the center of the deck, we have access to the crew quarters. Let's take a look. Now, immediately to the port hand side, we have a walk-in shower. And to the starboard side, the head. Continuing forward, there's a single stateroom with over-under berths. Now, this upper berth is a Pullman style that can be lowered to form a backrest, thereby converting that lower berth to a couch, creating a crew sitting room. A desk and bookshelves are right alongside. The quality of fit and finish is of equal caliber as the rest of the yacht, which can be seen in a separate video. And all the African Macquarie cherry wood is 55 mils thick and cut from the same tree, so it matches the wood throughout the yacht. The crew galley is modest and functional with plenty of counter space. A single basin stainless steel sink is recessed into the granite counter. Storage and fridge are below. To the port bulkhead, the 220 and 110 volt electrical panels, and we also have the generator controls on the left hand side. And we also have stairs to the port side. And these lead us to private access to the main salon, making this also viable as guest quarters. Now this private entrance, that's something we'd normally see in a 65 foot boat. Now just forward is the engine room. Take a look at this. Well, for starters, they're calling this standing headroom. Six feet, eight inches is a little more than standing headroom in my book, but okay, so be it. Let's do a little circular pattern around the engine room, starting with the diesel hydronic furnace that's providing the heat throughout the entire boat. As we make our way across, the manifold system is fed by the diesel furnace so that we can control how much heat goes to all of the individual zones throughout the boat. 20 kilowatt generator right over on the side just above. Notice the ventilation system has doors that will automatically close when the fire suppression system is activated. Down below on the port side we've got the first of the two active fin stabilizers from ABT track. Fuel filter, raw water strainer, backlit fuel sight gauge. There's your fuel level right there. In between the two water intakes, 
there's another intake going down into the bilge so that we can use either engine to pump out the bilge. Continuing to the starboard side, we've got the second fuel filter, the second track stabilizer fin. Just above is the fuel filter for the generator. The hydraulic tank for all of the hydraulic systems on the boat, including the two windlasses at the bow. 16 kW generator. So now we have a 20 and a 16. And of course in the center we've got the CAT 12.9 1000 horsepower engines. Well clearly the Endurance 658 has the range to live up to its namesake and that's just one of the many factors that go into making a long range cruiser like this. And that's my full sea trial of the Endurance 658 from Hampton Yachts. For Boatest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.